Good day, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of periodic trends and ionization energy. Our journey begins by unraveling the subtle but fascinating irregularities within a given period of the periodic table. One such example lies in the transition from beryllium to boron, as we can see in figure 7.10. Here, we witness a decrease in ionization energy. This change occurs because the third valence electron of boron must occupy the 2p subshell, which, interestingly, is unoccupied for beryllium. It's crucial to remember that the 2p subshell is positioned at a higher energy level compared to the 2 subshell, as illustrated in figure 6.24. This subtle shift in energy levels contributes to the observed phenomenon. Now, let's proceed to our next captivating insight. Good day, student. Welcome back, students. In our exploration of periodic trends and ionization energy, let's now shift our focus to another intriguing example. Moving from nitrogen to oxygen, we notice a slight decrease in ionization energy. What's the reason behind this change? It's all about the repulsion of paired electrons within the configuration configuration of oxygen, as highlighted in figure 7.11. Remembering Hund's rule, we know that each electron in the configuration configuration occupies a different p orbital. This strategic distribution minimizes the repulsion between the three configuration electrons, resulting in a slightly lower ionization energy for oxygen. This principle underscores the delicate balance of electron interactions within atomic structures. As we progress, keep in mind that the periodic table holds a wealth of insights into the behavior of elements. Let's journey further into the world of periodic trends. Welcome back, stu- Hello once again, curious minds. As we continue our quest through the realm of periodic trends and ionization energy, let's take a moment to reflect on the underlying principles. Hund's rule plays a crucial role in electron distribution, guiding us to minimize electron-electron repulsion. This rule ensures that electrons within the same orbital have parallel spins, maximizing stability. The intricate dance of these electrons significantly impacts ionization energy and other elemental properties. Remember, students, when we discuss trends, it's essential to consider the electron configurations of elements. The arrangement of electrons within an atom serves as a key determinant in explaining these patterns. As we conclude this part of our journey, let's carry these insights forward as we delve into more fascinating aspects of chemistry. Hello once again. Hello again, students. Today, let's delve into the intriguing world of electron configurations of ions. Now, when we talk about ions, we're discussing atoms that have gained or lost electrons. Specifically, when forming cations which are positively charged ions electrons are removed from the atom. And guess where we start removing those electrons? Well, we begin with the occupied orbitals that have the highest principal quantum number, n. Think of n as the energy level of the orbital. Let's take an example to make this clearer. Imagine a lithium atom with the electron configuration 1SUUS1. If we're to remove just one electron, it's the US1 electron that bids us farewell. Li, with its electron configuration of 1SUUS1, becomes Li with an electron configuration of 1SUUS, because that US1 electron is the one we've removed. Keep in mind. This concept of electron configuration is vital to understanding the behavior of ions. Let's now journey further into the fascinating realm of chemistry. Hello again, stu- Hello, dear students. In our ongoing exploration of fascinating concepts, let's now venture into the realm of electron configurations and ionization within iron, fine, atoms. The electron configuration of Fe is an intricate arrangement. 1s, 2s, 2p3s, 3p4s, 3d. Now, when we remove two electrons from Fe, we get Fe. What's particularly interesting is that the electrons re removed in this process come from the 4s orbital. Keep in mind that electron configurations play a crucial role in determining an atom's properties and reactivity. With this understanding, let's journey ahead. Hello, dear st Greetings. Students. Building on our previous knowledge, we now delve deeper into the ionization process of iron atoms. When Fe U undergoes further ionization, it transforms into Fe. In this case, another electron is removed, 
But here's the twist. The electron is extracted from the 3d orbitals. The reasoning behind this choice lies in the fact that all orbitals with n equals 4 are vacant. This step highlights the intriguing nature of electron configurations and the patterns that guide ionization. Now, armed with this knowledge, let's continue our journey of discovery. Greetings. Good day, students. Today, we're going to delve into the intriguing realm of electron configuration and the formation of anions. Anions are formed when electrons are added to atoms, resulting in a negatively charged species. To do this, electrons are placed into specific orbitals. Now, let's take a look at a concrete example to better understand this process. Consider a fluorine atom. When an electron is added to this atom to form the F ion, it's important to note that this electron is added to the orbital with the lowest value of n, which represents the principal quantum number. In our case, this means the electron goes into the 2p subshell, where there is still one available vacancy. So, our fluorine atom, which has the electron configuration 1 squared 2 squared 2p to the power of 5, becomes the F ion with the electron configuration 1 squared 2 squared 2p to the power of 6. This addition of an electron to the 2p subshell results in the formation of the negatively charged F ion. Remember, this process highlights the specific rules that govern the arrangement of electrons in atoms, ensuring stability and the achievement of lower energy states. Now, let's proceed to explore more about electron configurations and their fascinating effects. Good day, student. Welcome, dear students, to an exciting segment where we'll unravel the concepts of electron affinity and ionization energy. These topics build upon our previous exploration of ionization of atoms. Today, we're delving into the process of adding electrons to atoms, leading to the creation of anions. This fascinating phenomenon is called electron affinity. Moreover, we're going to uncover the intricate connection between electron affinity and ionization energy. As we journey further, you'll discover how the irregularities in the periodic trends of electron affinity can be linked to the electron configuration of atoms. Now, let's dive in and explore the world of energy changes associated with the addition and removal of electrons. Welcome, dear Hello again, students. Today, we're going to explore the fascinating concept of ionization energy in depth. The first ionization energy is a crucial measure of the energy change that occurs when an electron is removed from an atom, resulting in the formation of a cation. Let's take a closer look at an example. Consider chlor G, with a first ionization energy of 1251 kJ per mole. This value represents the energy change associated with the following process. Chlor G loses an electron to become chlor G and E. This equation captures the essence of ionization energy. Now, remember that electron configuration plays a pivotal role in this process. For instance, the electron configuration of chlor changes from 3 neon 3 s 3 p to 3 neon 3 s 3 p. This transformation is vital in understanding the shifts in ionization energy. Are you ready to dive deeper into the intricacies? Let's proceed. Hello again, st Fantastic, my diligent learners. Now that we've grasped the fundamental aspects of ionization energy and its implications, let's explore the connection between electron affinity and ionization energy. Picture this. As we move across a period, electron affinity tends to increase. Conversely, as we journey down a group, electron affinity usually decreases. But, as with any rule, there are exceptions. These irregularities often stem from the electron configuration of elements. The arrangement of electrons in an atom's orbital significantly influences its behavior. By analyzing these periodic trends, we can gain a deeper insight into the behavior of elements. Keep those critical thinking hats on as we delve further into the captivating world of electron affinity and its relationship with ionization energy. Fantastic! Hello again, students. Today, we're delving into the captivating world of ionization energy and electron affinity. Let's start by understanding ionization energy. When we talk about the ionization energy of an atom, we're referring to the energy required to remove an electron from that atom. The intriguing part is that all ionization energies are positive. 
What does that mean? Well, it means that energy must be put into the atom to actually remove an electron. This process might sound counterintuitive, but it's a fundamental concept in understanding atomic behavior. Now, what happens when atoms gain electrons? They can form anions, which are negatively charged ions. But how does this process relate to energy changes? That brings us to electron affinity. When an electron is added to a gaseous atom, there's an energy change that occurs. We call this change the electron affinity, and it measures the attraction, or affinity, of the atom for the added electron. Interestingly, for most atoms, energy is released when an electron is added. Take the example of a chlorine atom. When an electron is added to it, there's an energy change of negative 349 kilojoules per mole. The negative sign indicates that energy is actually released during this process. So, we say that the electron affinity of chlorine is negative 349 kilojoules per mole. It's amazing how these intricate energy changes play a crucial role in shaping the behavior of atoms. Now, let's move on to our next engaging topic. Hello again, students. Welcome back, dear students. In our quest to understand energy and chemical processes, let's take a closer look at electron affinity, an intriguing concept that involves different sign conventions. Electron affinity is the energy change that occurs when an electron is added to an atom or ion. Here's where it gets interesting. There are not one, but two sign conventions in use. In our introductory discussions, we use the thermodynamic sign convention. In this convention, a negative sign indicates that the addition of an electron is an exothermic process, releasing energy. For instance, when we consider the electron affinity of chlorine, which is negative 349 kilojoules per mole, it tells us that adding an electron to chlorine is an exothermic process, releasing energy. However, let's not forget that history sometimes shapes definitions. Historically, electron affinity was defined as the energy released when an electron is added to a gaseous atom or ion. This historical definition can lead to a different sign. For the same example of chlorine, the electron affinity by this historical convention would be positive 349 kilojoules per mole, as energy is released when an electron is added to gaseous chlorine. This historical convention can be confusing, as it contrasts with the thermodynamic convention we typically use. So, remember, when discussing electron affinity, it's crucial to consider the context of the sign convention being employed. Now, let's move forward and explore more captivating concepts. Welcome back, dear. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing concept of electron affinity and its counterpart, ionization energy. So, what exactly is electron affinity? Well, it's the energy change that occurs when an atom gains an electron. Take the example of chlorine. When a chlorine atom gains an electron, it becomes a chloride ion, and this process releases energy measured as electron affinity. For chlorine, this value is minus 349 kilojoules per mole. Now, why is this important? Electron affinity plays a significant role in determining an atom's stability. The more negative the electron affinity, the more likely an atom is to accept an electron and form a stable ion. But let's not forget about ionization energy. This is the energy required to remove an electron from an atom. While electron affinity is about gaining electrons, ionization energy is about losing them. Think of it as a tug of war between an atom and its electrons. As we move forward, you'll see how these concepts are intertwined and essential to our understanding of atomic behavior. Welcome back, students. Hello, curious minds. Today, we're delving deeper into the realm of electron affinity and its impact on atom stability. Imagine an atom's desire for electrons. It's like an invisible force pulling electrons towards it. When an atom has a higher electron affinity, it has a stronger attraction to electrons. This results in the formation of negative ions. These negative ions are more stable due to the atom's ability to hold onto its extra electron. Interestingly, there's a connection between electron affinity and atomic size. As we move from left to right across the periodic table, atomic size generally decreases, and electron affinity tends to increase. Smaller atoms have stronger electron affinities because their outer electrons are closer to the nucleus, leading to a higher attraction. So, remember, electron affinity isn't just a value. 
it's a reflection of an atom's craving for electrons and its role in shaping atom stability. Hello, curious Greetings, young scholars. Now that we've explored the ins and outs of electron affinity, let's take a moment to compare it with ionization energy. Think of these concepts as two sides of a coin. Ionization energy is like the energy required to break free from an atom's grasp. It's the energy needed to remove an electron. On the other hand, electron affinity is the energy released when an atom gains an electron. Imagine an atom as a cosmic playground where electrons are like eager players. When an atom wins the game of tug of war and captures an electron, it celebrates with the energy of electron affinity. Conversely, when an atom loses an electron, the energy invested in that electron is returned as ionization energy. So, we have this constant exchange of energy as atoms interact with electrons, influencing their behavior and chemical properties. Our journey into the realm of electron affinity and ionization energy is shedding light on the dynamic dance between atoms and electrons. Greetings. Hello again, inquisitive minds. As we wrap up our exploration of electron affinity, let's take a look at its real-world applications. Electron affinity has a profound impact on chemical reactions. By understanding an atom's willingness to accept an electron, we gain insights into how reactions occur. Think of it as a game of chemistry chess, where atoms strategically position themselves to either gain or lose electrons. One classic example involves halogens, like chlorine, reacting with metals. Halogens, with their high electron affinity, eagerly snatch electrons from metals with lower ionization energies. This results in the formation of ionic compounds and sparks those dazzling reactions you observe in the lab. So, electron affinity isn't just a theoretical concept, it's a guiding principle in the world of chemical transformations. With this newfound knowledge, you're well on your way to becoming true chemistry enthusiasts. Hello again, in Hello, dear students. Let's delve into the intriguing world of electron affinity and its impact on atomic stability. Electron affinity refers to the energy change that occurs when an atom gains an electron. A positive electron affinity, as in the case of noble gases like AR, signifies that the atom is not inclined to accept an additional electron. In simpler terms, an electron won't readily attach itself to an AR atom. This results in an interesting outcome. The AR ion, which could potentially be formed by gaining an electron, remains unstable due to this positive electron affinity. As a result, it doesn't form. This aspect sheds light on the fascinating intricacies of atomic behavior and the delicate balance between electron interactions. Now, let's continue our exploration of energy and atomic phenomena. Hello, dear stu Greetings, students. Today, we're delving deeper into the concept of electron affinity and its profound impact on atomic stability. Electron affinity represents the energy change that occurs when an atom gains an electron. Now, when we encounter a positive electron affinity, as is the case with noble gases like R, it holds significant implications. Specifically, this positive electron affinity tells us that these atoms aren't particularly keen on acquiring extra electrons. Let's take the example of R. The presence of a positive electron affinity means that an electron won't easily attach itself to an R atom. As a result, the formation of the R ion, which would involve adding an electron, faces a hindrance. This insight offers us a glimpse into the complexities of atomic behavior and stability. Remember, Atoms are always striving to achieve a state that minimizes energy, and this knowledge aids our understanding of why certain chemical reactions occur or don't occur. As we journey forward, keep these concepts in mind, as they lay the foundation for our exploration of energy and chemical reactions. Greetings, students. Welcome back, students. Today's lesson takes us into the world of noble gases and their unique electron behavior. Noble gases are renowned for their stability, thanks to their complete electron configurations. They boast full electron shells, which make them less likely to interact with other elements. This brings us to a fascinating point the positive electron affinity seen in noble gases. When we encounter a positive electron affinity, like in the case of noble gases such as AR, it indicates that these atoms aren't very receptive to gaining additional electrons. 
This leads us to a situation where an electron won't easily attach itself to an AR atom, ultimately impacting the formation of an AR ion. The inherent stability of noble gases due to their full electron shells is a key factor in this dynamic. So, remember, electron affinity isn't a universal trait it varies based on elements and their electron configurations. As we journey further, you'll see how these concepts intertwine with our broader study of energy and chemical reactions. Welcome back, students. Good day, inquisitive minds. Get ready for a sneak peek into our upcoming adventures. We're on the brink of diving into the intricate world of acids and bases. This exciting exploration is just around the corner, specifically in chapter 16. So, what's in store? We'll be delving deep into the chemistry of acids and bases, essential substances that you'll encounter throughout your studies. Acids, as you'll learn, release H plus ions, while bases release O ions. Understanding the behaviors of acids and bases is crucial for unraveling the complexities of chemical reactions. So, keep your curiosity alive as we embark on this exciting journey into the world of acids, bases, and their remarkable properties. Good day! Hello again, students. Now, let's delve into the intriguing world of electron affinities within the group 15 elements. These elements possess unique characteristics due to their half-filled P subshells. When an additional electron is introduced, it must be placed in an orbital that's already occupied. As a result, we encounter larger electron-electron repulsions, which influence the behavior of these elements. Notably, their electron affinities can exhibit two distinct patterns. Some elements, like nitrogen, N, have positive electron affinities, while others such as phosphorus, P, arsenic, as, an antimony, sb, exhibit less negative electron affinities compared to their neighbors to the left. This trend mirrors what we explored in section 7.4 about the first ionization energy. These variations arise from the unique electron arrangements and interactions within these elements' atomic structures. Let's continue our journey into the intricacies of electron affinities and their impact on chemical behavior. Hello again, students. Welcome back, dear students. In our exploration of the fascinating world of chemistry, we now turn our attention to the periodic trends and properties of elements. These trends provide us with valuable insights into the behavior of elements, but there's a catch. While we often study atomic radii, ionization energies, and electron affinities, we must remember that most elements don't naturally exist as isolated atoms. This prompts us to look beyond individual atoms and analyze the properties of larger collections of atoms. This approach gives us a broader understanding of element properties and helps us grasp the intricacies of periodic trends. Let's proceed to delve deeper into this captivating topic. Welcome back, dear. Hello, attentive learners. Today, we're uncovering the mysteries of atomic radii and the intriguing patterns that emerge. Atomic radii the measurement of an atom's size, are crucial in understanding the element's behavior. When we examine the periodic table, a fascinating trend becomes apparent. As we move down a group, the atomic size increases. This growth in size can be attributed to the addition of new electron shells, which leads to increased electron shielding. On the other hand, as we traverse across a period, the atomic size actually decreases. This is due to the growing positive charge of the nucleus, which draws the electrons closer. So remember, atomic radii hold valuable clues about an element's behavior within the periodic table. Let's proceed to the next captivating aspect. Hello, attend- Great to have you back, eager minds. Now, let's dive into the concept of ionization energy and its impact on elements. Ionization energy measures the energy required to remove an electron from an atom. This property holds crucial information about an element's reactivity and behavior. As we explore the periodic table, patterns unfold once again. Moving down a group, ionization energy decreases. This is because the outermost electrons are farther from the nucleus and experience greater electron shielding, making them easier to remove. However, as we progress across a period, ionization energy increases. The electrons are closer to the nucleus, and the greater positive charge makes it more difficult to remove them. Keep in mind, these trends are closely linked to atomic size and electron shielding, 
shaping how elements interact and bond. Let's press on to our next enlightening topic. Great to have you back. Hello again, inquisitive learners. Our journey through elemental properties continues with a look at electron affinities. Electron affinity measures an atom's eagerness to gain an additional electron. This aspect is vital in understanding how atoms form ions and engage in chemical reactions. Now, let's explore the periodic trends at play. As we descend down a group, electron affinity becomes less negative. This means that atoms are less likely to gain an extra electron. On the other hand, as we move across a period, electron affinity generally becomes more negative. This indicates a greater readiness to accept an electron. These trends are linked to factors like atomic size and electron configuration, painting a comprehensive picture of an element's behavior. Keep your curiosity alive as we venture into the next exciting phase of our study. Hello again. In Hello, students. Today, we're delving into the intriguing world of group 14 elements. Where the differences between elements within the same column become strikingly evident. Let's take a closer look at these fascinating elements and their unique properties. Group 14 includes carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, and lead. Despite belonging to the same group, these elements exhibit diverse characteristics that set them apart. Our journey starts with carbon, the lightest element in this group. Carbon takes various forms, from the dazzling hardness of diamond to the utility of charcoal. Its versatility finds applications in numerous fields due to its distinct properties. Now, let's explore further. Hello, students. As we delve deeper into carbon, we encounter a world of diverse applications. Carbon's manifestations range from the breathtaking brilliance of diamond, with its exceptional hardness and optical qualities, to the pragmatic utility of charcoal. The textured nature of charcoal allows it to draw light or dark lines effortlessly, making it invaluable for artistic and industrial uses. Its easy removability adds to its versatility. Can you imagine the immense spectrum of applications stemming from this single element? But our exploration doesn't end here. As we delve deeper, moving along our journey, we arrive at silicon and germanium, two elements that share a common atomic arrangement with diamond. However, their properties take a different turn. Both silicon and germanium are semiconductors, and this unique quality has propelled them into the heart of modern technology. These elements play a crucial role in integrated circuits and computers, the very devices that shape our contemporary world. The remarkable properties of silicon and germanium enable the manipulation of electrical signals paving the way for intricate electronic systems. Moving along our journey, our journey through group 14 takes us to tin and lead, two elements with contrasting characteristics. Tin exhibits a remarkable dual behavior, acting as a metal at temperatures above 13 degrees Celsius, white tin, and as a semiconductor below 13 degrees Celsius, gray tin. This distinctive trait underscores the versatility of elements and their responsiveness to varying conditions. On the other hand, lead stands out as a relatively soft metal. While tin finds use in various applications, lead story is marred by its toxicity. Extensive documentation highlights the hazards associated with lead exposure, emphasizing the critical importance of understanding element properties. Our journey through group as we conclude our exploration of group 14 elements, we're left with a profound appreciation for the intricate world of chemistry. The diverse properties exhibited by carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, and lead underscore the complexity of the natural world. These elements shape our everyday lives and propel technological advancements. They also remind us of the critical interplay between scientific understanding and responsible use as evident from both the remarkable applications and potential hazards associated with these elements. Remember, every element has its story, and the more we uncover, the more we come to appreciate the beauty of the periodic table. As we conclude... Hello again, students. In our journey through chemistry, we're now stepping into the realm of element classification and oxides. Elements. The building blocks of matter exhibit diverse properties that help us categorize them into three main groups. Metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. 
These categories guide us in understanding the behavior of different elements. Let's take a closer look at metals and nonmetals. Metals, with their unique set of properties, display traits like conductivity, malleability, and luster. On the other hand, non-metals possess their distinct characteristics, often showing lower conductivity, brittleness, and diverse physical states. The periodic table, a treasure trove of information, aids us in visualizing this classification. Now, let's delve further into the specific properties that distinguish these elemental categories. Hello again, st Great job following along, students. Let's focus our attention on metals and the exceptional traits that define them. First off, metals are fantastic conductors of both electricity and heat. This is why they're commonly used in various electrical components and cooking utensils. Another remarkable property is their malleability, which means they can be hammered into thin sheets without breaking. Alongside malleability, metals exhibit ductility, allowing them to be drawn into thin wires. And don't forget their characteristic lustrous appearance that catches the eye. Additionally, metals tend to lose electrons during chemical reactions, leading to the formation of positively charged ions called cations. These properties collectively make metals indispensable in various applications. Now, let's uncover the intriguing world of non-metals. Great job following. Brilliant progress, everyone. Non-metals are equally captivating with their distinctive set of characteristics. Unlike metals, non-metals are generally poor conductors of both electricity and heat. This property is why they're not commonly used in electrical applications. Non-metals also tend to be brittle, meaning they can easily shatter when subjected to force. This stands in contrast to the malleability of metals we discussed earlier. Non-metals are versatile in terms of physical states. They can exist as solids, liquids, or gases depending on conditions. An interesting pattern emerges with their electron behavior. Nonmetals often gain electrons during chemical reactions, forming negatively charged ions known as anions. The world of nonmetals is rich with diversity and significance. Let's continue exploring the intricate world of element classification. Brilliant progress. Keep up the great work, students. Our exploration wouldn't be complete without mentioning metalloids and the fascinating world of oxides. Metalloids, as the name suggests, exhibit properties that lie between metals and nonmetals. This middle ground grants them characteristics that make them quite versatile in different applications. Now, let's move on to oxides. Oxides are compounds formed when elements react with oxygen. These compounds play a crucial role in various natural and industrial processes. Think about rust on metal surfaces, that's an oxide. Similarly, the combustion reactions we discussed earlier involve the formation of oxides. Oxides are integral in fields ranging from materials science to environmental studies. The way elements interact with oxygen gives rise to a complex web of compounds that impact our daily lives. Fascinating, isn't it? Keep up the great work. Hello again, students. Today's lesson takes us on an exciting journey through the periodic table. We're about to uncover some fascinating patterns of reactivity that span across different elements. These patterns will help us understand how certain elements interact and form compounds. Keep in mind that while we'll touch on reactivity in this section, we'll delve deeper into the reactivity of specific nonmetals and metals in upcoming chapters. So, let's dive in and discover the hidden world of reactivity. Hello again, stu- Welcome, students. Let's gather, round, shall we? Today, we're going to roll up our sleeves and dive deep into the captivating world of reactivity trends. We'll kick things off by closely examining how non-metals gracefully navigate the realm of reactions, and oh, how intriguing it is to discover the myriad factors that influence their reactivity. After that, our spotlight will shift towards metals. Prepare yourselves to unravel the mysteries of how their reactivity dances in the elegant embrace of electron configurations. Remember, dear students, the arrangement of those tiny, energetic electrons around an atom plays a pivotal role in shaping its interactions with its atomic comrades. So, hold on to your seats, for what lies ahead is a mesmerizing spectacle of electrons engaged in a delicate and intricate dance that shapes the mesmerizing world of reactivity. Welcome. Welcome to
a closer look at nonmetals and their reactivity, students. Nonmetals bring their unique flair to chemical reactions. We'll explore the reactivity of some common nonmetals and unravel the connection between their valence electrons and how eager they are to engage in reactions. You'll also get to see examples of reactions involving nonmetals that showcase the dynamic nature of chemistry. So, let's journey into the world of nonmetal reactivity. Welcome to a fantastic students. Now, it's time to explore metals and their captivating reactivity. Metals have a wide range of behaviors when it comes to reacting with other substances. We'll uncover how their electron configuration, particularly the arrangement of valence electrons, influences this behavior. Keep your eyes peeled the correlation between the number of valence electrons and how willing metals are to join the chemical dance. Get ready to witness the fascinating world of metal reactivity. Fantastic. Brilliant work, my curious scholars. We've uncovered a glimpse of the reactivity patterns across the periodic table today. But this is just the beginning. In the chapters that follow, we'll delve even deeper into the reactivity of specific nonmetals and metals. You might wonder, why is understanding reactivity so important? Well, it's the key to unlocking a world of practical applications, from industrial processes to technological advancements. Get ready to put on your lab coats and safety goggles as we prepare for hands-on experiments and observations that will make these concepts come to life. Keep your enthusiasm high, because there's so much more to learn and explore. Brilliant work. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into a fascinating aspect of the periodic table, known as metallic character. This concept helps us understand how elements exhibit the characteristics of metals. The greater an element's metallic character, the more it behaves like a metal. Keep in mind, this behavior is linked to both the physical and chemical properties of elements. As we journey through the periodic table, we notice an intriguing pattern. When we move down a group, the metallic character generally increases. On the other hand, as we traverse from left to right across a period, the metallic character tends to decrease. So, the position of an element on the table provides us with valuable insights into its behavior. Now, let's explore the intricate connection between electron configurations and the distinctive properties of metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Hello, dear students. Hello, students. Today, we're going to explore the fascinating world of metals and their unique properties. Imagine encountering materials that exhibit a shiny luster, are excellent conductors of heat and electricity, and possess remarkable qualities like malleability and ductility. These traits are characteristic of most metallic elements. Picture metals being pounded into thin sheets with ease or drawn into wires that can carry electricity. In fact, most metals are solid at room temperature, but there's an exception. Mercury, which remains a liquid at room temperature due to its low melting point of minus 39 degrees Celsius. Now, let's talk about some metals that defy our expectations. Cesium and gallium, for instance, melt slightly above room temperature, at 28.4 degrees Celsius and 29.8 degrees Celsius respectively. On the other end of the spectrum, we have metals with impressively high melting points, such as tungsten. Tungsten, known for its role in incandescent light bulbs, melts at a whopping 3,422 degrees Celsius. Can you imagine the extreme conditions under which it transitions from a solid to a liquid? These properties make metals incredibly versatile and valuable in various applications. So, let's delve deeper into the exceptional world of metals and their intriguing characteristics. Hello, student. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're delving into a vital concept that helps us understand the behavior of elements in chemical reactions. So, let's start by focusing on metals. These elements tend to exhibit an intriguing property known as low ionization energies. This means that metals find it relatively easy to shed electrons and form positively charged ions called cations. As a result of this process, Metals undergo a transformation known as oxidation, where they lose electrons. Now, among the various atomic properties we've studied, the first ionization energy takes the spotlight as the most telling indicator of whether an element will behave as a metal or a nonmetal. This energy measurement helps us predict how readily an atom will relinquish its electrons. 
Keep in mind that this behavior significantly influences how metals participate in chemical reactions. To enhance our understanding, let's visualize this process through an illustrative diagram. Welcome back, every- Hello again, young minds. Now that we've grasped the notion of ionization energy and its connection to metal behavior, let's delve deeper into the phenomenon of metal oxidation. This process revolves around a fundamental concept, electron loss. Metals, driven by their low ionization energies, willingly release electrons as they react. Why? To achieve stability, of course. This electron loss results in the creation of cations, positively charged ions. Imagine metals as generous donors, sharing their electrons to achieve a balanced state. A simple analogy could be likening this process to giving away extra electrons to attain a sense of harmony. This principle is evident in various reactions we encounter every day. Now, let's explore some examples to solidify our understanding of this intriguing phenomenon. Hello again, young Greetings, curious minds. As we progress in our exploration, let's focus our attention on a pivotal concept, the first ionization energy. This energy measurement serves as a significant indicator that guides an element's behavior. It's like a secret code that tells us whether an element will exhibit metal-like characteristics or venture into the realm of non-metals. Elements boasting low first ionization energy are often metals. These elements lean towards releasing electrons and forming cations, as we've learned. On the flip side, elements with high first ionization energy have a tendency to behave as non-metals often holding on to their electrons more tightly. Think of it as a unique signature that defines an element's chemical identity. To enhance our understanding, let's visualize this connection through a diagram that sheds light on the relationship between ionization energy and element behavior. Greetings. Hello, inquisitive scholars. Our journey has taken us through the fascinating world of metals and their behaviors. But what exactly guides these behaviors? It's time to uncover the intricate interplay of atomic properties. We're not just talking about one property, we're talking about a whole ensemble. The radius of an atom, its electron configuration, electron affinity, the list goes on. Yet, among this array of factors, the first ionization energy stands out as the shining star. It's the driving force behind whether an element shines as a metal or takes on a different role as a nonmetal. And while we're discussing these properties, it's important to remember that all the dynamic interactions happening at the atomic level involve both potential and kinetic energy. These energies shape the way elements engage with each other in the mesmerizing dance of chemical reactions. Stay tuned, because our journey is far from over. Hello, Inc. Great to have you back, students. Now, let's uncover the mysteries of transition metal ions. Unlike alkali and alkaline earth metals, transition metals don't follow a straightforward charge pattern. Their ion charges can vary widely. One remarkable characteristic of transition metals is their ability to form more than one type of cation. For instance, compounds with Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus ions are quite prevalent. The flexibility in charge and the multiple cations formed make transition metals a dynamic and intriguing group. Let's move forward to learn more. Great to have you back. Hello, dear students. Let's continue our exploration of chemical reactions and energy production. Today, we're focusing on a captivating topic. Ionic compounds formed from combinations of metals and nonmetals. These compounds have a distinctive characteristic. They are primarily ionic substances. To help you understand this concept better, let's take a closer look at some examples. Imagine a metal oxide or a halide, both of which are commonly found as ionic solids. The reaction between metals and nonmetals results in compounds with a unique structure. For instance, consider the fascinating reaction between nickel metal and oxygen, yielding nickel oxide. This compound is an ionic solid, containing Ni2 plus and O2 ions. This reaction can be symbolized as 2 Ni's plus O2, G, and RAR, 2 Ni's. Keep in mind that these oxides play a crucial role due to the abundance of oxygen in our environment. Now, let's delve even deeper into the intriguing world of chemical reactions and their role in energy production. Hello, dear st Good day, students. 
Today, we're embarking on a journey to explore a group of elements known as nonmetals. Unlike metals, which we've learned about before, nonmetals can display various physical states, including solids, liquids, and gases. One fascinating characteristic is that they lack the shiny appearance known as luster, and they typically aren't great conductors of heat and electricity. While most nonmetals have lower melting points compared to metals, there's a captivating exception. Diamond, a form of carbon, which melts at an incredibly high temperature of 3,570 degrees Celsius. Now, let's delve deeper into the world of nonmetals and learn about their diverse properties. Good day, student. All right, students, let's dive deeper into the molecular world of nonmetals. Under ordinary conditions, seven nonmetals exist as diatomic molecules, meaning they naturally bond together in pairs. These diatomic gases include familiar names like hydrogen, H2, nitrogen, N2, oxygen, O2, fluorine, F2, and chlorine, Cl2. Surprisingly, there's even a nonmetal that exists as a diatomic liquid, bromine, bridge 2, and another as a volatile solid, iodine, I2. Imagine these nonmetals uniting in pairs to form these intriguing molecules. As we proceed, we'll uncover more captivating aspects of nonmetals' behavior. All right, students. As we journey further, students, let's explore the solid nonmetals in greater detail. These nonmetals differ from their gaseous and liquid counterparts. In this realm, we encounter two fascinating extremes. On one hand, we have diamond, an extraordinary nonmetal known for its exceptional hardness. On the other hand, we find sulfur, a nonmetal that's remarkably soft. Diamond's hardness is due to its unique atomic structure, while sulfur's softness stems from the arrangement of its atoms. So, we have these intriguing contrasts within the world of nonmetals. Let's continue our exploration to unveil even more about their properties. As we journey further, as we wrap up our exploration of nonmetals, let's take a moment to recap what we've learned. We've delved into the remarkable variety of physical states that nonmetals can exhibit, from solids like diamond and sulfur to diatomic gases such as hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. We've observed their distinctive characteristics, including the absence of luster and their limitations as heat and electricity conductors. We've also marveled at diamond's exceptional melting point and discovered that nonmetals like bromine can exist as a liquid, while iodine can even take on the form of a volatile solid. This journey has provided us with just a glimpse into the complexity of nonmetals. As we continue our studies, remember that these elements play a crucial role in shaping the world around us, and there's still so much more to uncover. As we wrap up, hello again, students. Today, we're delving deeper into the realm of chemical reactions and how substances interact. Our next focus is on electron transfer, a fundamental concept. Nonmetals, with their notable negative electron affinities, exhibit a tendency to gain electrons during reactions. This intriguing behavior sets the stage for fascinating reactions between nonmetals and metals. Take aluminum and bromine, for instance. When they react, aluminum's electrons are transferred to bromine, leading to the formation of aluminum bromide. Let's visualize this process through an illustrative diagram and examine the specifics of the reaction in the image before us. Now, let's move on to uncover more captivating details about these interactions. Hello again, stu- Welcome back, everyone. Let's continue our exploration of the aluminum-bromine reaction and the intriguing outcomes it presents. Here, we witness the chemical equation representing the process. 2 Als plus 3 bridge 2. L, right pointing arrow 2 aluminium bromide 3, S. This equation beautifully captures the electron transfer happening from aluminum to bromine. As a result, we witness the formation of an ionic compound known as aluminum bromide. This compound showcases the strong electrostatic forces binding oppositely charged ions together. Our image provides a visual of the molecular structure of aluminum bromide. Let's appreciate the elegance of this reaction and the transformative power of electron transfers. Welcome back, everyone. Great to see you all engaged, dear students. 
As we proceed, we're going to discuss a crucial concept, ionic bonds and their connection to electron transfers. The transfer of electrons between atoms leads to the formation of ionic compounds. These compounds, like aluminum bromide, are held together by strong electrostatic attractions. This bonding results in fascinating properties such as high melting and boiling points, as well as solubility in water. Take a look at the image before you. It illustrates the ionic bonding process between aluminum and bromine. This example beautifully showcases the intricate dance of electrons and their influence on chemical reactions. Great to see you all in Hello once again, students. Today, we're taking a closer look at electron configurations and the concept of achieving a noble gas state. As we know, nonmetals have a tendency to gain electrons in order to achieve stability. This process involves filling up their outermost occupied sub-subshell. This particular arrangement results in what we call a noble gas electron configuration. Let's consider an example to better understand this. The bromine atom, with its atomic number 35, gains a single electron to complete its sub-subshell. This transforms it into a bromide ion, Br- with an electron configuration of 1s, 2s, 2p3s, 3p4s, 3d4p. This noble gas electron configuration provides stability and helps the atom achieve a more balanced state. So, remember, in the quest for stability, nonmetals strive to mimic the noble gases by gaining electrons. This principle plays a crucial role in the world of chemical behavior. Now, let's delve further into the intricate world of chemical interactions. Hello once again. Welcome back, students. In today's lesson, we're delving into the intriguing world of nonmetal oxides and their role in creating acids. It's fascinating to note that most nonmetal oxides exhibit acidity. This means that when these oxides dissolve in water, they give rise to acids. Let's take a closer look at this process using an example. When a nonmetal oxide reacts with water, it leads to the formation of an acid. For instance, consider carbon dioxide, COO, reacting with water. This reaction produces carbonic acid, HuCO3, which is a weak acid. Another example involves phosphorus pentoxide, p 401 reacting with water to form phosphoric acid, h 3 po 4 this is an interesting chemical transformation where nonmetal oxides play a crucial role in generating acids. Now, let's proceed to our next topic and explore more captivating concepts. Welcome back. Great job, students. Let's continue our journey through the world of nonmetal oxides and the formation of acids. We just discussed how nonmetal oxides, when combined with water, give rise to acids. Now, Let's explore a couple of specific examples in more detail. When carbon dioxide, CO2, interacts with water, H2O, it undergoes a chemical transformation, resulting in the formation of carbonic acid, H2CO. This process is crucial in understanding how carbon dioxide contributes to the acidity of solutions, like in carbonated beverages. Moving on to phosphorus pentoxide, phosphorus pentoxide, when it reacts with water, H2O, it forms phosphoric acid, phosphoric acid. This reaction showcases the significance of nonmetal oxide reactions in generating acids. Keep up the excellent work, and let's proceed to uncover even more captivating insights. Great job, student. Hello, bright minds. We've now delved into the world of nonmetal oxides, acid formation, and their practical applications. But there's so much more to explore when it comes to chemical reactions. Chemical reactions are like magical transformations happening at the molecular level. They're responsible for the creation of new substances, changes in energy, and the fascinating interactions that shape our world. Nonmetal oxides play a vital role in a wide array of chemical reactions beyond just acid formation. These reactions have diverse applications, from the creation of new materials to the production of energy. So, as we conclude this segment, remember that the world of chemistry is full of wonder and excitement, waiting for us to uncover its secrets. Stay curious, and let's embark on more adventures together. Hello. Hello again, students. Let's now delve into the fascinating realm of chemical reactions involving carbon dioxide and water.
When carbon dioxide interacts with water, a specific reaction takes place. This reaction leads to the creation of carbonic acid, which is responsible for the acidity we observe in carbonated water and even in rainwater to some extent. It's incredible how such a seemingly simple reaction can have a significant impact on the properties of these liquids. Keep in mind the concept of carbonic acid as we continue exploring the interconnected world of chemical reactions. Hello again, stu Welcome, dear students. Our journey takes an intriguing turn as we delve into the consequences of sulfur presence in common fuels like oil and coal. When these fuels undergo combustion, they generate sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide as byproducts. Once released into the atmosphere, these substances have the ability to dissolve in water, leading to the creation of what we know as acid rain. This environmental phenomenon has a profound impact as a major pollutant in various regions around the world. It's a vivid example of how chemical reactions in the industrial processes can directly influence our environment. Welcome, dear students. Greetings, young minds, as we continue our exploration of chemical reactions. We now focus on the interactions between nonmetal oxides and basic solutions. When nonmetal oxides come into contact with basic solutions, a remarkable transformation takes place. These oxides dissolve and give rise to salts along with water. Let's consider a specific example. The reaction between carbon dioxide and sodium hydroxide. This leads to the creation of sodium carbonate in water. This concept of reactions between nonmetal oxides and bases adds another layer of complexity to the intricate world of chemical transformations. Greetings, young. Welcome back, students. Today, we're delving into an intriguing topic, metalloids. These elements exhibit a unique set of properties that lie between those of metals and nonmetals. Think of them as having a blend of both characteristics. Let's take silicon as an example. Silicon appears to have the visual appearance of a metal, but here's the twist, it's actually brittle, not malleable like typical metals. Additionally, its ability to conduct heat and electricity isn't as impressive as that of metals. This makes metalloids like silicon stand out as a fascinating group of elements with properties that bridge the gap between metals and nonmetals. Now, let's continue our journey through the world of chemical properties. Welcome back, students. Hello again, young minds. Today, we're focusing on silicon an element that showcases the intriguing nature of metalloids. Silicon may look like a metal at first glance, sharing some visual characteristics with them. However, its brittleness sets it apart. Unlike metals that can be bent and molded, silicon is fragile and not malleable. Its conductivity for heat and electricity is also worth noting. While it's not as efficient as metals, silicon still plays a crucial role in modern technology. Silicon's unique electrical properties make it a cornerstone of electronics and semiconductors, enabling the devices we use every day. Keep in mind that while silicon possesses some metallic traits, its distinctive qualities make it a standout member of the metalloid family. Hello again, young. Great to see you all engaged, students. Let's dive deeper into the intriguing world of metalloids and their electrical conductivity. Metalloids, as you now know, exhibit properties that sit between metals and nonmetals. When it comes to electrical conductivity, metalloids don't fit neatly into the conductor or insulator categories. Instead, they demonstrate a unique property known as semiconductivity. This means they can conduct electricity to a certain extent, making them incredibly useful for electronics. Metalloids like silicon, germanium, and arsenic are excellent examples of this behavior. Their tunable conductivity is a key factor in the design and function of many electronic devices. So, remember, metalloids play a vital role in shaping the technology-driven world around us. Great to see you all in- Hello once again, curious minds. As we continue our exploration of metalloids, let's delve into their real-world applications. These elements play a crucial role in a variety of industries and technologies. We've already talked about silicon significance in electronics, but metalloids have a broader impact. Semiconductors, used in everything from computers to solar panels to LED lighting, rely on the unique properties of metalloids. Boron, another metalloid, finds its place in strengthening materials, making them more durable. 
Antimony, on the other hand, is employed in flame retardant materials, enhancing safety in various products. Metalloids truly showcase their versatility by contributing to advancements across different fields. Our journey through the world of elements continues to unravel exciting connections between science and technology. Hello once again. Hello again, students. Today, we're delving into the world of metalloids and their remarkable properties that make them pivotal for modern technology. Our journey continues with a focus on metalloids, particularly silicon. These elements play a crucial role in the creation of integrated circuits and computer chips, which are the heart of many electronic devices we use daily. What's fascinating about metalloids, including silicon, is that they exhibit unique semiconductor properties. Unlike pure metals that are excellent conductors and nonmetals that are poor conductors, metalloids strike a balance. They possess an electrical conductivity that falls between these two extremes. This special property enables metalloids to be effectively used in the realm of integrated circuits. But how does silicon, for instance, go from being an electrical insulator to a semiconductor? Let's find out. Hello again, stu- As we journey further into the intricate world of metalloids and their application in technology, let's explore how silicon's conductivity can be altered. While very pure silicon may not conduct electricity effectively, we can make a remarkable transformation. By introducing specific impurities known as dew pants into the silicon crystal lattice, we can dramatically enhance its electrical conductivity. These dew pants, carefully chosen based on their electronic properties, interact with the silicon atoms and create a controlled level of conductivity. This is a critical technique in the world of semiconductor physics and technology. The addition of dew pants allows us to precisely control and manipulate the electrical behavior of silicon and other metalloids, paving the way for the creation of various electronic components. As we journey further, this is where the magic lies, students. Our journey into the realm of metalloids and semiconductors brings us to a pivotal realization. By controlling the chemical composition, we can master the electrical properties of materials. When we add dew pants to silicon, we're not only altering its conductivity but also determining the type of charge carriers it hosts. This remarkable level of control allows us to craft semiconductors with tailored properties, perfectly suited for a variety of applications. Whether it's enhancing conductivity for data processing in integrated circuits or enabling precise signal amplification in transistors, the ability to manipulate conductivity opens up endless possibilities in the world of electronics. So, dear students, remember to embrace the intriguing fusion of chemistry and physics that semiconductors offer. And as you embark on your learning journey, always keep in mind that the building blocks of modern technology rest upon these foundations. This is where the magic... Good morning, class. Today, we'll be delving into Chapter 12 of our textbook, titled, Exploring Controlled Conductivity in Metalloids. Now, let's begin by understanding the key concepts introduced in this chapter. We'll explore the intricate relationship between metalloids and controlled conductivity. Metalloids, often found along the zigzag line on the periodic table, possess properties that bridge the gap between metals and non-metals. As we progress through the chapter, pay close attention to the various factors that influence conductivity in metalloids. We'll examine how factors like temperature, impurities, and electronic structure impact the flow of electrical current. Moreover, we'll delve into real-world applications of controlled conductivity in metalloids. From semiconductors revolutionizing electronics to their use in sensors and solar cells, metalloids play a pivotal role in modern technology. To excel in this subject, engage in discussions, ask questions, and relate the content to what you've learned so far. Remember. Understanding the underlying principles is key to mastering the complexities of controlled conductivity in metalloids. So, let's embark on this educational journey together as we uncover the fascinating realm of controlled conductivity in metalloids. Make sure to review the chapter thoroughly, and I look forward to our discussions in the upcoming classes. Good morning, class. Hello, dear students. Today, we're going to explore an intriguing historical discovery that led to the creation of a bright and intense light source. In the 1820s, a scientist named Goldsworthy Gurney stumbled upon something fascinating. 
when he heated calcium oxide with a hydrogen oxygen blowpipe, an amazing phenomenon occurred. The calcium oxide emitted a dazzling white light. This discovery caught the attention of theaters in the 1830s and 1840s, and they adopted this method to illuminate stages, giving birth to the phrase, in the limelight. However, despite its effectiveness, these lights had their challenges. They required constant attention and posed a fire hazard, which eventually led to their replacement by a groundbreaking invention. Electric lighting, pioneered by the renowned Thomas Edison in 1879. This transition marked a significant advancement in lighting technology. Now, let's journey further into the developments that shape our world. Hello, dear st Greetings. Students. Our exploration continues, as we delve deeper into the evolution of lighting technology. Remember how Goldsworthy Gurney's discovery of calcium oxide's luminescence lit up the stages of theaters? Well, while it was indeed a brilliant innovation, the limelight had its downsides. The need for constant attention and the risk of fires made it a challenging choice. But fear not, because in 1879, the ingenious Thomas Edison revolutionized the way we illuminate our world by introducing electric lighting. This innovation marked a pivotal moment in history, offering numerous advantages over the limelight. The electric lights were not only safer but also more convenient and efficient. This transition showcases the remarkable progress we've made in harnessing energy and technology to improve our lives. Now, let's journey further into the intriguing world of energy transformations. Greetings. Welcome back, students. Let's focus on one remarkable individual who shaped the course of history with his innovative spirit. We're talking about none other than Thomas Edison. In 1879, Edison unveiled his groundbreaking invention, the electric light bulb. This invention wasn't just a light source, it was a beacon of progress. Electric lighting offered a safer, more reliable, and convenient alternative to the limelight. Its impact was profound, leading to the widespread adoption of electric lighting in various industries and urban landscapes. Think about how this innovation transformed the way we live, work, and enjoy our surroundings. Edison's light bulb truly illuminated a path to a brighter future. As we journey through these examples, remember that every innovation is fueled by the intricate dance of energy and chemical reactions. Stay curious, and let's continue our exploration. Welcome back, students. Hello, my enthusiastic learners. It's time to unveil the chemistry behind the brilliance of the electric light bulb. You see, Every time you flip that switch, an intricate series of chemical reactions takes place. Electric current flows through the filament, which is usually made of tungsten. As the current passes through, it meets resistance, generating heat. This heat causes the filament to glow brightly, emitting light. Here's the magic. Electrical energy is transformed into light energy through this process. However, it's essential to note that not all the electrical energy gets converted into light. Some is lost as heat. This is why we're constantly working to improve the efficiency of lighting technology, making it more energy efficient and environmentally friendly. So, every time you enjoy the warm glow of a light bulb, remember the fascinating journey of energy transformation happening right before your eyes. Keep your curiosity alive, and let's embark on the next chapter of our exploration. Hello, my greetings, my bright minds. Let's wrap up our enlightening journey by exploring the continuous innovations in lighting technology. As the world evolves, so does our approach to lighting. We're witnessing a shift towards energy-efficient and sustainable lighting solutions. One notable example is LED lighting, which stands for light-emitting diode. LEDs are incredibly energy-efficient and have a much longer lifespan compared to traditional incandescent bulbs. This innovation not only saves energy but also reduces the frequency of bulb replacements. As we gaze into the future, there's immense potential for even more exciting developments in lighting technology. From smart lighting systems that adapt to our needs to novel ways of harnessing renewable energy for illumination, the possibilities are endless. So, dear students, remember that the quest for innovation and energy efficiency continues, shaping the world we live in. Keep your minds bright and your curiosity ignited as we conclude our enlightening journey today. Greetings, my Good day, students. 
Today, we're delving into the intriguing realm of noble gases and their unique properties. Let's begin by understanding what sets these elements apart. Noble gases, found in group 18 of the periodic table, possess some remarkable characteristics. One key feature is their fully filled S and P subshells, which make their electron configurations exceptionally stable. This stability is reflected in their large first ionization energies, which is the energy required to remove the outermost electron. As we move down the column, we notice a predictable decrease in ionization energy. But what's truly fascinating about noble gases is their reactivity, or rather, their lack of it. Due to their stable electron configurations, they are remarkably unreactive, earning them the name, inert gases, for quite some time. It was in the early 1960s that a breakthrough occurred, challenging this perception. Neil Bartlett, a researcher at the University of British Columbia, had an intriguing idea. He proposed that xenon, Z, an element from this group, might have a low enough ionization energy to actually form compounds. This was a groundbreaking concept that led to the discovery of noble gas compounds and expanded our understanding of chemical reactivity. So, remember, even the most stable elements can surprise us with their hidden potential for chemical interactions. Let's explore further. Good day, students. Hello, students. Today's lesson is going to be exciting as we delve into the chemistry of group 1 and group 2 metals. As we've learned, elements within the same group share certain characteristics, but there are also intriguing trends that shape their behavior. Our journey will take us through the periodic table and electron configurations, helping us understand the unique chemistry of alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. So, get ready to explore the world of these fascinating elements. Hello, students. Welcome back, students. Let's start by focusing on the alkali metals in group 1. Alkali metals are known for their remarkable properties. They are highly reactive and have a shiny appearance. When these metals come into contact with water or air, interesting reactions occur that we'll explore in detail. Keep in mind that as we go along, we'll uncover some of the trends that exist within this group. Welcome back. Fantastic job, students. Now, let's shift our focus to group 2 metals, also known as alkaline earth metals. These elements have their own set of intriguing properties. They're less reactive compared to alkali metals, and we'll explore the reasons behind this difference. Understanding the contrasts and similarities between these two groups will deepen our grasp of periodic trends and electron configurations. Fantastic job! Well done, everyone! As we journey through the chemistry of group 1 and 2 metals, let's not forget about the intriguing trends that shape their behavior. In alkali metals, we observe specific patterns in properties like atomic size and ionization energy. These trends are vital for understanding how elements within a group change as we move down the periodic table. Pay close attention as we uncover the underlying reasons for these patterns. Well done, everyone. Welcome to the final stretch of our lesson, dear students. Electron configurations play a crucial role in determining an element's chemical behavior. We'll explore how valence electrons, those occupying the outermost energy level, impact the reactivity of alkali and alkaline earth metals. Through examples of reactions influenced by electron configurations, you'll gain a deeper insight into the captivating connection between atomic structure and chemical properties. Welcome to the final. Bravo, students. We've covered a lot today, and it's time for a quick recap. We've explored the chemistry of alkali and alkaline earth metals, discovering their unique properties, reactivity, and the role of electron configurations. Remember, periodic trends and electron configurations are like keys to unlocking the secrets of the elements. As you continue your journey in chemistry, this knowledge will prove invaluable. Keep up the excellent work, and I'm excited to see you all further unravel the mysteries of the periodic table. Bravo, students. Hello, dear students. Today, we're delving into a fascinating realm of oxygen anions and their intriguing compounds. In our previous discussions about alkali metals, we highlighted two less common oxygen anions, the peroxide ion, oxid-dion, and the superoxide ion, oxid-dion. 
These ions form compounds that lead to interesting reactions, ultimately producing oxide and oxygen. Let's take a closer look at one such reaction. 2H2O2 in aqueous solution transforms into 2H2O in liquid form and O2 in gaseous state. And guess what? This reaction is exothermic, meaning it releases energy. The enthalpy change, increment HO, for this reaction is minus 196 day 1 kajit. So, as you can see, chemical reactions can be accompanied by energy changes, and that's what we'll explore further. Hello, dear st Good day, students. Today's lesson brings us to the intriguing realm of alkali metals. These remarkable elements are characterized by their unique properties. To start, they exist as soft metallic solids, with a distinct silvery metallic luster. But that's not all. Alkali metals also exhibit high thermal and electrical conductivity. The term, alkali, has its roots in an Arabic word that translates to, ashes. Interestingly, many compounds of sodium and potassium, two alkali metals, were actually first isolated from wood ashes by early chemists. Now, let's delve deeper into the fascinating world of alkali metals. Good day, students. Good day, students. Today's lesson brings us to the intriguing realm of alkali metals. These remarkable elements are characterized by their unique properties. To start, they exist as soft metallic solids, with a distinct silvery metallic luster. But that's not all. Alkali metals also exhibit high thermal and electrical conductivity. The term, alkali, has its roots in an Arabic word that translates to, ashes. Interestingly, many compounds of sodium and potassium, two alkali metals, were actually first isolated from wood ashes by early chemists. Now, let's delve deeper into the fascinating world of alkali metals. Good day, students. Welcome back, dear students. Let's continue our exploration of alkali metals by focusing on their intriguing physical properties. One remarkable characteristic is their softness. They are notably softer than many other metals. This property sets them apart in the realm of elements. Additionally, alkali metals tend to have lower densities when compared to other metallic elements. This contributes to their unique behavior. Moreover, these elements boast relatively low melting and boiling points, which adds to their versatility and usability. These physical properties are part of what makes alkali metals so fascinating. Now, let's proceed to the next aspect. Welcome back. Hello again, eager learners. Our journey into the world of alkali metals takes us to their captivating reactivity. What sets these elements apart is their high reactivity, and it all comes down to their electron configuration. Alkali metals have just one valence electron, which makes them incredibly eager to achieve stability. To do so, they readily lose this outer electron, leading to the formation of positively charged ions with a plus one charge. This phenomenon allows them to achieve a more stable electron configuration. This reactivity is a defining characteristic of alkali metals and has wide-ranging implications in various chemical reactions. Ready for more? Let's move on. Hello again, e Hello again, dear students. Today, let's delve into the fascinating world of periodic trends and explore a remarkable group of elements known as alkali metals. As we journey down a group in the periodic table, we notice some intriguing patterns. The atomic radius increases, and the first ionization energy decreases. This means that elements in the lower parts of a group have larger atoms and are more prone to losing an electron. Now, let's focus on the alkali metals. These metals, found in the first column of the periodic table, exhibit some unique characteristics. They boast the lowest first ionization energy within their respective periods. This low value indicates that it's relatively easy to remove their outermost s electron. As a consequence of this, alkali metals are exceptionally reactive. They readily lose this outer electron, forming ions with a 1 plus charge. This is the key reason behind their high reactivity. Now, let's move on to our next intriguing topic. Hello again, 